So I've had a good few flights on my vertical takeoff remote control plane now, and I've made a few modifications. The first and probably most major modification I've made is I've extended the fuselage by five centimeters. This allows me to run a smaller battery while still keeping a correct CG during a hover. I'm currently using a four cell 1800 milliamp lithium polymer battery, and I'm getting around eight to 10 minutes of flight time, depending on how fast I fly and how long I hover for. I've also modified the gears on the tilt mechanism to work with actual servo horns. This prevents it slipping during a hard landing or a crash. There's also been a few issues with the speed controllers desyncing and the kicker 2 board cutting out, but I think I've solved them now. So anyway, the other day I mounted a GoPro on the top of the wing facing out towards the wingtip. I also mounted some airflow indicators, or the technical word, string. Just before the aircraft came to a complete stop during a transition, I noticed some weird airflow over the top of the wing and I had to find out more. So I set about 3D printing a new GoPro mount which would raise it up slightly higher so I could get a better view of the wing. I would like to take this moment to thank 3D Prints Limited who are a newly set up UK based 3D printer filament company and they ship to anywhere within Europe. They sent me a few reels of filament and so far the quality has made it really easy to print thin wall structures which are perfect for aircraft. They sent me a few different colours, but I'm going to be saving them for future projects. So go check them out in the link in the description below. So here is the final setup, ready for testing. I mounted two rows of thinner string so that it could indicate the airflow a bit better. So let's get on with the testing. As you can see when transitioning from a hover to forward flight, the airflow indicators are parallel to the airflow. So to prove that the airflow indicators are working, let's put the aircraft in a stall. You can tell the aircraft is stalled because the airflow indicators start to swirl around in the turbulent air. So before I get on with the testing, I'm just going to explain how a stall actually occurs. So air has a certain viscosity and when flown over a certain surface, it experiences something called skin friction. This is where the air flowing close to the surface is slowed down by the friction of the surface. There are two changes in pressure as the air flows around a wing. At the front of the wing, there is high pressure air. This is due to the front of the wing compressing the air as it flies through it. As the air passes around the curved surface of the top of the wing, it is accelerated, and this causes a low pressure zone. Towards the back of the wing, the low pressure air meets with the high pressure air from the underside of the wing. This is unusual because air always wants to flow from high pressure to low pressure. However, the momentum of the air carries it from the low pressure zone to the high pressure zone. When the angle of attack of the aerofoil increases, the pressure difference between the bottom of the wing and the top of the wing also increases. Now the stall occurs when the pressure at the rear of the wing is high enough to overcome the momentum of the lower pressure air. This causes the slow moving air at the surface of the aerofoil to actually move forwards. The zone where the air is moving forwards is separated from the main airflow by something called a boundary layer. Now when the whole airfoil stalls, you can see all the airflow indicators moving forwards, which is proof that this boundary layer exists. So why is analysing the stall so important for a vertical takeoff aircraft? Well when a vertical takeoff aircraft transitions from forward flight to a hover, it essentially travels past its stall speed. So I guess it's pretty important to see the stall characteristics. I was looking at a picture of the V-22 Osprey the other day and I noticed it has some small tabs on the top of the wing. I believe these to be vortex generators. Now vortex generators are small tabs which are placed on the top of an aerofoil at a slight angle. This slight angle causes a differential in pressure on either side of the tab. As the high pressure air will want to flow into the low pressure zone, it flows over the top of the tab causing a vortex. If you want to find out more about how they work, another YouTuber called Sam Shepard did an excellent video explaining exactly how they work and he has some great CFD animations. So what's the purpose of the vortexes that come off of the tabs? Well these vortices are designed to destroy the forward moving air bubble on the top of the aerofoil and therefore delaying the stall. So I 3D printed some for my aircraft and let's give them a go.
So let's put the aircraft in install and see how they perform. You may not have noticed any difference between this stall and the stall without the vortex generators, but if I play it in slow motion, it may be a bit clearer. It's important to note that the vortex generators do not prevent a stall, they just delay the stall. The inner half of the wing doesn't have vortex generators, and you can see it stalling early, while the airflow over the outer half is still smooth. Then a few milliseconds later, as the airspeed drops even lower, the outer half of the wing also stalls. So now we know how the vortex generators work, let's go back and do a transition test without them. As you can see, the airflow indicators are parallel to the air as it's coming in for the transition. Then when the aircraft reaches zero airspeed, the airflow indicators just flap about, as if it was stalled. So let's try that again with vortex generators. Hmm, okay, that didn't look too different to the previous one. So let's have a look at the two scenarios side by side. So as you can see, there is definitely no significant change between the two. So does this mean that vortex generators don't help with a vertical takeoff aircraft? If that's true, then why are they on the V-22 Osprey? I spent a couple more flights testing the vortex generators and I could feel a difference during the transition. It felt as though the altitude control, just as the aircraft was about to stop, was a bit easier to manage. Now I tried multiple times to show this with the airflow indicators and this was the best way that I could come up with to show it. So I'd prepare for the hover by rotating the motors to the vertical position and then shutting off the throttle. I'd let the aircraft glide until it was almost at a stall and then increase the throttle to keep the altitude constant. You can just about see that the airflow behind the vortex generators is still smooth compared to the airflow on the inner side of the wing. So how this helps with the altitude control is the inner part of the wing stalls first, then the outer part of the wing stalls and then the motors take over. So instead of the whole wing stalling in one go and then the motors struggling to catch up, it's more of a gradual change and it's easier to manage as a pilot. So am I going to keep these vortex generators on the VTOL or not? Well I'll need to do some forward flight efficiency testing because I'm not sure how they would affect the drag during forward flight. I can only really see them helping in a transition if you are a beginner flyer or perhaps flying FPV where judging the airspeed is quite difficult. But if you practice the transition enough to know the stall characteristics then you will know when to kick the throttle in and then you can practice to get the transition smooth. So I hope this video was of some interest to you. If you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate it if you left a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel then please click subscribe. Thanks for watching and goodbye.